So Despero's in the dungeon and he had this great idea to take this spool of thread with him so he could wrap it around himself. That way he could weave around the twisting dungeon and not get lost. But as he was pushing the thread down the stairs, the thread got away from him and rolled far, far away. And it landed at the feet of Botticelli Remorso, which is probably the most evil rat of all time. And he's the one who taught Roscuro how to torture people. And he's kind of torturing Despero right now. He told him, I know where the princess is and I'll lead you right to her. All you have to do is follow me. And so we last left Despero and he was holding on to Botticelli's tail. And let's see what happens next. Chapter 48, The Tale of a Rat. Have you ever held the tail of a rat? At best, it's an unpleasant sensation, scaly and cold, similar to holding a small, narrow snake. At worst, when you are dependent upon a rat for your survival, and when a part of you is certain that you are being led nowhere except to your death, it is a hideous sensation indeed to have nothing but a rat's tail to hold on to. Nonetheless, Despero held on to Botticelli Remorso, and the rat led him deeper and deeper into the dungeon. Despero's eyes at this point adjusted quite well to the darkness, though it would have been better if they had not, for the things he saw made him shiver and shake. What did he see? He saw that the floor of the dungeon was littered with tufts of fur, knots of red thread, and skeletons of mice. Everywhere there were tiny white bones glowing in the darkness, and he saw in the dungeon tunnels through which Botticelli led him the bones of human beings too grinning skulls and delicate finger bones rising out of the darkness and pointing towards some truth best left unspoken. Despero closed his eyes, but it didn't help. He saw as if his eyes were still open, wide with the bones, the tufts of hair, the knots of thread, and the despair. Exactly, Botticelli laughed as he no negotiated the twists and turns. Oh yes, exactly. If what was in front of Despero was too horrible to contemplate, what followed behind him was perhaps even worse. Rats. A happy, hungry, vengeful parade of rats. Their noses up in the air, sniffing, sniffing. Mouse, sang one rat joyfully. Yes, oh yes, mouse, agreed another. But something else too. Soup, called another rat. Yes, soup, the others agreed. Blood, sang a rat. Blood, they all agreed together. And then they sang. Here, mousy, mousy, mousy. Here, little mouse. Botticelli called out to the other rats. Mine, he said. This little treasure is all mine, gentlemen and ladies. Please, I beg you, do not infringe on my discovery. Okay, so here is Botticelli Remorso, and he's leading Despero. And you can see in the background, there are all the rats following little Despero because they want a taste of him too. And you can see on the dungeon floor some not so nice stuff. Mr. Remorso said Despero. He turned and looked behind him and saw their rats, their red eyes and their smiling mouths. He closed his eyes again and he kept them close. Mr. Remorso, he shouted. Yes, said Botticelli. Mr. Remorso said Despero and he was crying now. He couldn't help it. Please, the princess. Tears, shouted the rats. We smell tears. Mousy, we smell mousy tears. Please, shouted Despero. Little friend, said Botticelli. Little Despero Tilling, I promised you and I will keep that promise. The rat stopped. Look ahead of you, he said. What do you see? Despero opened his eyes. Light, he said. Exactly, said Botticelli. Light. Chapter 49. What do you want, Miggery So? Again, reader, we must go backward before we go forward. We must consider for a moment what had occurred with the rat and the serving girl and the princess down in the dungeon before Despero made his way to them. What happened was this. Roscuro led the pea and Mig deep into the dungeon into a hidden chamber, and there he directed Mig to put the princess in chains. Gore, said Mig, she's going to have a hard time learning her lessons if she's all chained up like. Do as I say, said Roscuro. Maybe, said Mig, before I lock her up, her and me could switch outfits, so we could start in already with her being me and me being a princess. Oh, yes, said Roscuro, certainly a wonderful idea. Miss Miggery, princess, take off your crown and give it to the serving girl. The pea sighed and took off her crown and handed it to Mig, and Mig put it on and slid immediately right down her small head and came to rest quite painfully on her poor, abused ears. It's a biggish thing, she said, and real painful, like... Well, well, said Roscuro. How do I look, said Mig, smiling at him. 
Ridiculous, he said. Laughable. Mid stood blinking back tears. You mean I don't look like a princess? She asked to the rat. I mean, said Roscuro, you will never look like a princess, no matter how big a crown you put on your tiny head. You look exactly like the fool you are and always will be. Now make yourself useful and chain the princess up. Dress up time is over. Mig sniffed and wiped her eyes and then bent to look at the pile of chains and locks on the floor. And now, princess, he said, I'm afraid the time for your truth has arrived. I will now tell you what your future holds. And as you consign to me to darkness, so I consign you to a life spent inside the dungeon. Mig looked up. Ain't she going to be upstairs like a serving maid? No, said Roscuro. Ain't I going to be a princess then? No, said Roscuro. No one, said Roscuro. Oh, sorry. But I want to be a princess. No one, said Roscuro, cares what you want. As you know, reader, Miggery So had heard this sentiment expressed many times in her short life. But now in the dungeon, it hit her full force. The rat was right. No one cared what she wanted. No one had ever cared. And perhaps worst of all, no one would ever care. I want, cried Meg. Shh, said the princess. Shush, said the rat. I want, sobbed Meg. I, 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 I want. What do you want, Meg? The princess said softly. What, shouted Meg. What do you want, the Miggery so? The princess shouted. Don't ask her that. Stop talking. Stop it. But it was too late. The words had been said. The question at last had been asked. The world stopped spinning and all of creation held its breath, waiting to hear what it was that Mig Rousseau wanted. I want, said Mig. Yes, shouted the pea. I want my ma, cried Mig into the silent waiting world. I want my ma. Oh, said the princess. She held out her hand to Mig and Mig took hold of it. I want my mother too, said the princess softly, and she squeezed Mig's hand. Stop it, shouted Roscuro. Chain her up, chain her up. Gore, said Mig, I ain't going to do it. You can't make me. All right, there is Mingery So, the princess, and Roscuro in the dungeon. Notice how she has the crown and it doesn't fit her head. And Roscuro still has his uh, spoon crown. Roscuro, Roscuro. I got the knife, don't I? She took the knife and held it up. If you have any sense at all, said Roscuro, and I heartily doubt that you do, you will not use that knife on me. Without me, you will never find your way out of the dungeon and you will starve to death here or worse. Gore, said Meg, then lead us out now or I will chop you up into little rat bits. No, said Roscuro, the princess will stay here in the darkness and you, Meg, will stay here with her. But I want to go upstairs, said Meg. I'm afraid that we're stuck here, Meg, shouted the princess, unless the rat has a change of heart and decides to let us out. There will be no changes of heart, said Roscuro. None. Gore, said Meg, and she lowered the knife. And so the rat and the princess and the serving girl sat together in the dungeon as outside the castle the sun rose and moved through the sky and sank to the earth and night fell. They sat together until the candle had burned out and another one had to be lit. They sat together in the dungeon. They sat and sat. And reader, truthfully, they might be sitting there still if a mouse had not arrived.